Mitch, good morning. How are you, sir? Uh, good morning, Hoppy. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, great to be with you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much. Are you a, a shopper? Have you gotten it done? Do you wait? I mean, what do you? How do you handle that? It, there's nothing like going out on like December 23rd and and seeing the mall, you know, full of other guys just like me that haven't <laughs> done anything. <laughs> Yeah. And so uh, it's it's then it becomes hunting, not shopping. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, All right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I just love the uh, Christmas season and the holidays, though, and it's just uh, it's great to get out and see everyone. You've announced your leadership team, the committee chairs. Not a lot of changes. One change that stood out to me was that Senator Dave Seipel, Republican from Preston County, was moved from education to agricultural and rural development. Now, uh, Seipel supported Ed Gaunch in the in the race against. Against you for Senate president. So, how much of Seipel's reassignment was linked to that? Well, first, let me say that the people of West Virginia, I hope, are excited and uh, enthusiastic about this leadership team. It is world class, great people, and the roles that they fill uh, perfectly, I believe. Dave Seipel represents, uh, and by the way, he and I are great friends. He's an incredible senator, represents the people of his district just beautifully. And uh, we're, we're on great terms. And uh, and so whether or not he's supported someone else for Senate president or not, that has no bearing in any of these decisions. We put the right people in the right places. It's sort of like a coach putting the uh, the best players in the roles that they fill. And look at the agriculture and rural development for the area he represents. That is perfect uh, for him. He has a great interest in the, those issues. And uh, the person we have filling the education slot is a former school board member uh, in Monroe County. County, uh, steeped in that tradition of education. That's Kenny Mann. And, uh, yeah, Kenny, Kenny Mann, Mann who uh, will do a phenomenal job. Well, there. let's go. Let's go to that. Let's go to that because I don't know Kenny Mann well. I've talked to him a couple of times, and I'm not saying you have to be from inside a Beltway. If we had a Beltway, to be able to head a committee, but it does help when you've been in the legislature. You know how committees work. You understand the logistics of it. I mean, he's never done that. I mean, granted, he has the background in education, but he's never done that. So, uh, do you have any trepidation about having him head up a very important committee? Education committee? No, not a bit. I, I have extreme confidence in uh, Kenny Mann. I think it's great that we have a diversity of people who have experience in the legislature and those who are brand new to the process that bring a fresh perspective. Kenny brings a, uh, a wonderful perspective to that role, uh, and he's we're, we're, our leadership team is geographically dispersed as well as uh, from an experience level dispersed. And I think it's just a perfect um, scenario for this for the West Virginia Senate to lead the state in the right direction. Okay. And you didn't make didn't make too many other changes. I mean, there were a couple, but nothing of... Um, I mean, you left, you keep people... Well, I'm going to... You're going to say they're all key people, but you left uh, Charlie Trump in charge of judiciary, left Michael in charge of finance, so those folks were already there. So you don't have to say anything changes there. They're there and doing a fantastic job. There would be... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think there should be an uproar if anybody uh, suggested changing those two folks out. They're just terrific. And uh, uh, okay, uh, we're talking with uh, Senate President, soon to be Senate President. When was that? When does that take place? When you're sworn January in? January the eleventh. January eleventh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who will uh, take over as the president of the West Virginia State Senate? And also, that makes you Lieutenant Governor. Also, that makes you next in line to be Governor. Have you contemplated that? In case, in case the governor is unable or unwilling to serve, have you contemplated that? Well, and I'm just very uh, hopeful that uh, the president or governor-elect uh, justice is able and willing to serve out his term and uh, lead the state with you know great vigor and uh, um, to new heights. Do you know uh, what I he's going to do, do, do? You know, well, you want to be successful. Everybody wants the new governor to be successful. Do you know what he's Absolutely. going to do? Do you know well, specifically what he's going to do? Now, we know what he's talked about. We know what he said mm-hmm. in the campaign and a lot of big promises. But uh, but there are legislative things that need to be done. There's a budget with a potential $400 million hole in it. Uh, there is this concern about the economic malaise, all these things. Do you know what he's going to do? I do not. Uh, I'm not sure what his specific plans are. I think he has the right vision for West Virginia to, uh, to move us forward in terms of jobs and opportunity. And I hope, like the, uh, the Senate, his focus is going to be on jobs, jobs, jobs. And uh, that solves a lot of the other revenue issues we have, a lot of the social ills and concerns that we have. In my view, the best social program is to put people back to work and have opportunities and jobs. And Hoppy, he said those things. Now, if you get specific about it, uh, I'm sure he's developing those plans right now. Uh, but to the extent there is a, a void in uh, 
and specific plans to move the state forward that certainly the legislature we have um, great ideas to offer and we'll be pursuing those uh, uh, as well now, are you are you working with him yet have you sat down are there because this thing and I don't mean to like I'm not lecturing here but you know Mitch this stuff comes mm-hmm. up fast and, you know and what? go ahead you're right you're a hundred percent right a 60-day legislative session is a short amount of time to turn this state around. We've done, I think, amazing work over the last couple of years uh, to put us on the, a new direction in West Virginia. But it does. It hits you fast, and y- you know you need to move quickly through this legislative process. So I can tell you the Senate, and I'm sure the House will also, will have our bills ready to move this state forward on day one. Well, I can tell and, you that, that uh, not to belabor or mm-hmm. continue to belabor the point, which I will, because this will be the, one of the dominant stories, is that there's a projected $400 million shortfall mm-hmm. in a re- general revenue budget of $4.1, $4.2 billion. That is a big number. Is that the heavy lift that you guys will do, or you're going to wait for the governor to do that? Well, as again, to the extent there's a void in leadership from the governor's office, which I'm hopeful that there is not. I'm hopeful that he puts forth the plans that you know validate his campaign promises of no new taxes and no cuts. Um, and th- those were his promises during the campaign, and I take him at his word on those uh, uh, promises. And we look forward to seeing those the budget that he develops around those campaign promises. But Hoppy, at the end of the day, when if the, if the governor, which I'm hopeful that he does, fulfill those promises, if he doesn't, the legislature will lead on this issue. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm committed to ensuring that uh, uh, our committees are staffed, ready to go, right people in place to to put this state's budget. Uh, and pass it during the regular session or shortly, you know, a couple of days afterwards. Senate, uh, Senate President Mitch, incoming Senate President Mitch Carmichael, uh, from, Republican from Jackson County. Uh, Mitch, the, and I think that the consensus is from most of the leaders is that the top issues are clearly jobs, the economy, and, and the budget. Now, you have, I've heard you speak on the floor many times about the, uh, the, the private sector and, and the government is not a very efficient job creator. The best job creators is the private sector, with which I agree with. So how much can, and the, sta- the legislature has already passed legal reforms. There's been some tax reform, some lowering of business taxes. So what, would, what realistically more can the government do to increase employment and jobs and economic opportunity in the state? Well, the role of government is to create the climate that's conducive to the private sector creation of jobs. You've heard me say it, and you just reiterated it. You're a thousand percent right. This government does not create jobs. But we do need to knock down the hurdles than the barriers to the job creators. For instance, uh, one of the things that you did not mention is regulatory reform. Mm -hmm. West Virginia has the dubious distinction of being the most overregulated, burdensome, onerous regulatory climate in America, of any state in America. So that's one of the things that the legislature is going to aggressively pursue. We hope we have help from the executive branch on that to knock down these regulatory burdens that create barriers to the job creators. The other thing that we can do is uh, education reform. We've heard it over and over and over that education uh, is the pathway to economic growth. And uh, in West Virginia, our, uh, I think it's widely acknowledged throughout America that we have not had the performance from our school system uh, that we should uh, for the money that we invest. And Hoppy, uh, we want to return control of the education system. We want to divest Charleston's interest in this and have a we're overburdened with top down regulations in Charleston. We want to return that to the local entities and allow our teachers to teach and our school systems be invigorated with success and it's incumbent upon us. It's a moral responsibility. Well, the, 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 the way, we, we, you know, I mean, we, I've been around a long time, too, and I mean, I think uh-huh. we do education reform about every third year, it yeah. seems like to me, and we still struggle. I think there have been improvements. I like the grades of schools uh, that has come out. We have seen a slight improvement in some test scores since we went to the the current uh, the, the standards. Are you going to fool with the standards at, standards at all, which is always a hot button issue, or leave the standards alone, or leave that up to the Board of Education? Are you guys no, going to get involved the, in I, standards? I think we're good. I mean, my view is we're good with the standards. Uh, the standards have been adjusted. They've been, uh, I mean, there's probably, I'm tired 
of changing these standards every two or three years. Right, I mean, we need right. to lock in on a set of standards and teach uh, uh, a world class to have our students perform at a world. What about school level. choice? What do you want to yeah, go? School choice is a vital element of. Uh, we of don't a, have that now. You want to go there? You want to you want to do the school choice thing? Well, I, want, I certainly want to introduce more uh, flexibility to parents to to have children. Uh, removed from schools that are failing. I mean, who would want to keep a, uh, ch- you know, it's a child in a failing school system. But uh, so there's a lot. I, I would just want to, if I may, transition a little bit back to the economy right. because okay. there's a lot we can do in education. There is a lot, and we're going to do that. I think by any measure, we uh, have not performed as we should. But in terms of this economy and getting it moving, there is no reason this state cannot be the most prosperous state in the nation. You know it as well as I do. We have natural resources, water resources, uh, fossil fuel industry. We have people ready, willing, and able to go to work, but we have created a, a legal climate, a regulatory climate, and a tax system that is preventing job creators from moving to West Virginia. Well, at the at the people. risk of being that guy, I think uh-huh. there are, I think there are a lot of pro- I think there are a lot of reasons why we can't and don't and it has we'll argue about this another day, but it has to do with um, it has to do with the drug problem. It has to do with mm-hmm. not having a properly trained workforce and people who can't pass the drug test. It has to do with um, uh, some parts of the state where you can't get there, and if you put something there, you can't hire people that are going to show up for work for it. I think there's a lot of reasons why we're not uh, doing that now. But anyway, you're you're an optimist. You're a sunny guy. I'm kind of a half glass is well, half empty guy, and you know. No, so. I don't think you're looking at it that way. I mean, I think you properly identify the problems, but I think we're offering solutions to those things. I mean, we empower and enable people to uh, stay home not work, uh, use drugs, uh, and I'm not saying everybody that doesn't have a job is using drugs. Right? I, I don't want that to be the story of this. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're putting programs in place that test those uh, that, uh, that are on uh, public assistance for uh, drug abuse. We want to do that. We, we want to make it hard to stay at home, not work, and we want to make it easy to go to work and create opportunities for and and provide a sort of a, a guide path for your children. Uh, look, this is the way you live in the world. You get up, you go to work, and uh, and good things happen. Senate President Elect Mitch Carmichael, Republican Jackson County. Mitch, always good talking with you. Congratulations again on your position and your leadership team. We look forward to talking with you throughout the years and uh, the rest of this year to next year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Javi. Merry Christmas to you and to all your listeners.